This video is going to cover the first part of the immunology part of the Unit 3 of Higher Hemobiology, so it's going to cover the non-specific defences. So there's only going to be one video on this, and it's mainly going to focus on one particular type of white blood cell, okay, and then its response to infection. We'll talk more about that cell in the next set of videos, but for now we're mainly just going to focus on one. Okay, so there's a few things that you need to know to begin with, right, and a few definitions and some general things that you'll probably already know. So pathogens should be something that you've heard about maybe from earlier on in high school. So pathogens are just microorganisms that cause disease. So bacteria and viruses, fungi, things like that. Okay. And the whole point of you having defenses in the first place is so you defend yourself against pathogens. So your body has a whole lining to it and that lining is made of epithelial cells and that lining then makes up the skin. Right, so it's a lining on the outside which protects you from pathogens. And you've also got linings on the inside that will protect you from pathogens that are internal. So those linings are in the digestive system and the respiratory tracts. Okay, so these provide a physical barrier. They stop those pathogens entering your bloodstream and entering your tissues. Okay, so initially those epithelial cells, because they're so closely packed, they provide such a tight barrier that those things can't get through. Right, as well as that, they also produce secretions. So secretions are like liquids that they would release. Okay, and those are chemical defences because they're made up of chemicals that would kill those pathogens. Right, so things like tears. Tears are really salty because salt tends to kill pathogens. Saliva, okay, mucus, which is in your stomach, um, or your digestive tract and your respiratory tract, and also stomach acid. And your skin is also slightly acidic, so it produces chemical defences itself to then try and kill off any pathogens that are on it. Right, so this is your first line of defence. But the main part of non-specific defence is what happens when this barrier, that physical barrier of epithelial cells is broken. Okay, and that's when we start to talk about what's called the inflammatory response. So you probably have heard of inflammation before or maybe um, something being inflamed. Right? So your inflammatory response is essentially a response to something damage in the skin, okay, so to infection, to a pathogen entering your tissues, right, so it's a response to infection and it's normally damage to the skin. Now it can also be if you think about having a cold and how sore your throat can get, so if you think about that, that would be infection of your respiratory tract, so the epithelial cells within that respiratory tract, right, so it involves the area becoming inflamed, so if you think about where you've heard of inflammation before, you'll know that an area that's inflamed is red and it's swollen, right? And there's reasons behind that. So that's inflamed or inflammation. So the reason why this happens is because of a particular type of cell in your body called a mast cell. And this is one that's a really common answer to, to a lot of questions. So name the, um, the cell responsible for inflammation or the inflammatory response. And it would just be mast cells, right? So before I move on to describing what those do in particular, what I'm going to do is label this diagram. So this is very similar to the ones that you'll have seen in your notes and it's also a very similar one to what the SQA released. So this is essentially your skin, okay, and the outer layer of skin. And these are your epithelial cells within the skin. Okay, so that's a barrier. Now it could be within your throat or digestive tract or something like that, but just as an example, this is the skin. Okay, and in this example, this is a splinter. Now, if you've got a splinter in your skin, that has broken that epithelial lining and it's allowed infection to come in. It's allowed a pathogen, so bacteria and stuff to come in. Okay. Now, what happens is then it triggers these mast cells, which are these ones here that are shaded in grey. Okay. And those mast cells will start to bring about the inflammatory response. Now, you'll also notice this here, this diagram of a blood vessel. This hopefully you'll recognise as a blood capillary. Remember, blood capillaries have only got your endothelial lining and then the it's only wide enough for blood cells to fit through. Now you notice these ones with the weed kind of dimples are red blood cells and this is a white blood cell. Okay, and it's a white blood cell because it's got a nucleus, the red blood cells don't. Right? So to give you a bit more detail about mast cells then, mast cells release a chemical which you probably will have heard of and that chemical is known as histamine. Now, you'll recognise that, hopefully, from antihistamines. So, antihistamines are taken um, 
as a response to kind of allergies and stuff, which we'll talk about later. And it's because your body can then respond, it produces histamine, and it goes through all these processes that then might be dangerous to you if you over respond to certain things. Okay, but right now histamine is a really good thing. Okay, histamine is how you bring about the inflammatory response and try to prevent infection getting more serious. Right, so histamine causes two things. So first of all, it causes what's called increased capillary permeability. Now, hopefully you remember that from when we talked about this in unit two, about the, um, the blood vessels and things moving out of the capillaries, right? If the capillary walls are permeable, it means that more things will move out through the capillary walls and into the tissues, okay? So if they're more permeable, that allows more of that plasma that's in that capillary to move out of the capillary and into the tissues surrounding it. Now, essentially what happens is that means there's more liquid leaving that capillary and therefore that area becomes swollen, right? So that leads to plasma leaking out the capillaries and into the tissues. So that causes swelling. Okay, now that swelling does actually serve a purpose. It kind of localizes the area and kind of protects it a bit. So the next cause of histamine, which is one that's really important, is it causes vasodilation. Now, you will have heard of vasodilation because we did that in the second unit. So, vaso, remember blood vessels, dilation, widening. So, the blood vessels widen. So, the lumen of that blood vessel widens. So, if you think about what happens with that then, if that blood vessel widens, therefore, you get an increased blood flow. Right, and if those blood vessels dilate, it also causes the area to become reddened. Which is why areas that are swollen and inflamed then are also reddened because those blood vessels have then dilated and they, you can see more of them. Right, so that blood flow is a good thing because it brings in white blood cells, okay, to try and deal with this infection. Remember, white blood cells deal with infection and it brings in specific or um, a particular type of white blood cell called phagocytes. Now, you'll have heard of them from National 5, hopefully. So phagocytes, they'll engulf and digest pathogens, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And what it also does when you increase blood flow is it brings in the delivery of things that are supposed to seal this wound. So if you think about unit two as well, if you try to seal an area off, okay, if you try to seal it and protect it and um, close over that wound, you need clotting factors, you need the blood to clot. So it delivers clotting factors to that area to then seal that off and prevent any further infection as well. Okay, so it's bringing in things to deal with the infection and it's bringing in things to then seal off that wound so there's no further infection coming in. Right, so now I'm going to do is talk to you a bit more about phagocytes in particular. Okay, because you need to know quite a lot of detail about these. And well, probably about the same amount roughly of detail as you would know in National 5, with just a little bit more. So phagocytes are one type of white blood cell and bear in mind that we're talking about non-specific um, defences right now. They are non-specific white blood cells and that's something really important to remember because when we talk about the specific stuff it tends to be really easily mixed up. Right? And just the same as all white blood cells, they're produced in the um, bone marrow within um, your legs and things like that and stem cells. Right. So the key thing about phagocytes is they recognise foreign pathogens. And that's the same with all white blood cells. They're recognising something that's not part of your body. Okay, so they recognise foreign pathogens. So if it comes across foreign pathogens, what it does is it destroys them. Okay, and it destroys them by something called phagocytosis, which again, you should hopefully remember from National 5. Okay, so phagocytosis. So I've got a wee diagram here. Okay, which reminds you of what phagocytosis is. So again, with a lot of these, there's a lot of diagrams that are involved in this. So you need to go to the label particular things. So this thing here would be your phagocyte. Okay, and this thing here would be your pathogen. So a bacteria or a fungi or a virus, for example, right? And then this point here is when that phagocyte has engulfed, right? It has taken and it's surrounded that pathogen. 
So this is the phagocyte engulfing the pathogen. Right, now next along here, what we've got here are lysosomes. Now if you remember from way back, lysosomes contain enzymes. Right, and this is our pathogen here. So lysosomes, what they'll do is they'll release enzymes around about that pathogen. And therefore, it digests the pathogen. Okay, using those enzymes contained in lysosomes. Right, so that's why I've got a point in the bottom that I'll come on to in a wee bit as well about why um, these cells would need a lot of ribosomes. So as well as phagocytosis, what your phagocytes will also do is they will release a particular protein. Okay, now you may have heard of this particularly because of um, COVID and things. There's people talking about cytokine storms. Um, which is why young people tend to, um, if they are ill with things, um, like defence things about infection, they can get really ill from it, okay, because your body overreacts to things. But in, in a normal person, when you're normally defending against disease, you'll release proteins, these phagocytes will release proteins called cytokines. Okay, now those cytokines have a couple of functions. Now, one of the main functions is actually just to be a call to arms to kind of bring more of these guys in. So it attracts more phagocytes. Right, so you're not just going to have a few phagocytes there at that um, infection site. You're going to bring even more by producing more chemicals that wave a big flag and say, come back over to this infection site, we need more to help us. Okay, so it's bringing in more phagocytes to then fight the infection. Now what it also does, which is really important and it'll lead on to the next topic in a wee sec, is it acts as a signal to bring specific white blood cells in. And it tells them to accumulate. Now remember, this is non-specific at the moment, right? These phagocytes don't really particularly recognise anything specific about these pathogens. It just recognises that it's not part of our body and it needs to destroy it. It doesn't really do anything other than that. It just destroys it and cleans it up and that's it. Okay, so what you need to then do is then trigger the specific immune response to then deal with that in the long term. Okay, so that you can really launch a, a full immune response against it. All right, now one wee point I've got down the bottom here is that phagocytes have large numbers of ribosomes. And this would be a kind of question where they'd ask you to suggest why phagocytes have a large number of ribosomes. And it's because they have to produce enzymes that they keep in lysosomes to break down those pathogens. And they also produce cytokines, which are proteins. Now, a lot of these questions, again, it might not just be suggest why they have a large number of ribosomes. It might be suggest why they have a large number of mitochondria. So mitochondria then are required to produce the energy or the ATP involved in the production of enzymes or these cytokines. And again, you could also link it to why they have um, a nucleus and what the role of the nucleus is in this. So remember, the nucleus contains DNA, it contains genes that code for the production of proteins, which is your enzymes and your cytokines. Right, so what you'll see in your notes as well, as what I'm going to um, put up here, is a kind of flow chart to summarise what happens here. So one way point to make, um, that I didn't really make at the start, is that this is talking about epithelium, not endothelium, okay? So endothelium is the lining of your blood vessels. Epithelium is the external linings of your body. So make sure that you're calling it epithelium. So that epithelium is damaged by um, some kind of virus in your respiratory tract or by damage to the skin or something like that. And those mast cells then will produce histamine. All right? Histamine causes vasodilation and it also causes capillary permeability to be increased. That capillary permeability being increased causes swelling, which causes leaking plasma into the tissues. And the vasodilation brings clotting factors and it brings phagocytes. Right, so those phagocytes conduct phagocytosis and they also release those proteins that are cytokines, which will bring more phagocytes and then trigger the specific immune response. So those specific white blood cells that come over. So be very clear that Phagocytes are involved in non-specific responses, non-specific immune defence. 
they don't really know what they're doing. They just go in, scoff everything that is not belonging to the body and then just go off in their own merry way again. Okay, they're very much just the cleanup crew. Now, the specific defence is much more detailed and much more intricate and I'm going to cover that in the next video.